Hi, my name is Alex. I work for Midokuro. Uh, can we go? Can we just have a show of hands? Who, who never heard of the name Midokuro or Midonet before? So everybody that never heard of it? Okay, that's too many. <laughs> I, I, will, I will probably fail this talk. Um, who, who has never heard about a thing called Korea? Every, uh, there, there's actually more people who know Korea than who know Midokura. That's a good thing. Uh, I'm here as a replacement for the CEO of our company, Dan Mihai Dimitri. Uh, I was sent here on a two days notice, so <laughs> let's, let's try to, to work through this together. Uh, <laughs> um, container networking. Uh, which of you has experience uh, working with containers and who of you has ever experienced uh, problems setting up or, or wiring their containers to OpenStack? One, two, three, four. Okay, there's only four people who think that container networking could be improved with relation to OpenStack. That means I can go home now. Um, um, basically, what Korea is trying to achieve and what we, what we learned when the Korea project started is that uh, container networking does a lot of nice things, but for those people who are used to OpenStack and who like working with Neutron, um, there has got to be a better way to, to work with containers. Uh, who, who in this room knows of a project called Magnum? Uh, it's a lot surprising me a lot. Uh, okay, so Magnum, a lot of people, the first questions when asking about Korea is, uh, what is the deal between Korea and Magnum? Isn't, isn't there something in Magnum supposed to do what Korea does? Well, it's, it's actually not so easy. Magnum uses Korea. So when you use Magnum, you can also work with Korea. Korea itself is more like a way to make Neutron and Lip Network be nice to each other. So it's like low-level technology that will never make any money, you will never see it, you will never talk to a customer about it. It's pure back-office technology that should make the life of a system operator easy. Um, as always, we have not invented here. Uh, the container guys and the Neutron guys have uh, very interesting opinions about networking. And uh, one thing you notice is they're all trying to say the same thing, but depending where they come from, they're using different words. Um, <laughs> this leads to, uh, for, for people talking to each other and for teams working together, this leads to confusion. Uh, when computers have to work together, of course, this doesn't work. Um, so, Korea was invented to, to help uh, to help set up networking for containers in OpenStack Neutron. So whenever you work with Docker Swarm or whenever you work with Kubernetes or Mesos in the future, you can install and configure Korea to set up Neutron networks when you run the appropriate commands in Docker uh, to, to also expose these networks in Docker. And on the other hand, when you run neutron commands or create neutron networks in OpenStack Horizon dashboard, and then Docker will have access to these networks. Does that make sense? No means yes. Uh, we are part of the OpenStack Big Tent. Uh, that means Korea from the beginning has been a project created by uh, several companies who are normally in a very fierce competition to each other. So the Korea project is, is a project where vendors from, uh, from network overlay companies uh, work peacefully together and, and try, try to reach the goal of bringing Docker networking closer to, um, to Nutrient networking. This is interesting because officially and normally uh, these companies tend not to uh, speak good of each other and tend not to work uh, easily together because they have 
they are both fighting for the same market share, so they are both fighting to sell you uh, a network product. And then, of course, if if they if they work together, um, there, there there are certain problems that the people have to overcome. But in Korea, because it's so uh, Korea is vendor independent, that means um, when you're using Korea, you can use OVS, Plumgrid, Meetonet. Uh, you can use a lot of uh, network uh, overlay software, and we are encouraging every vendor. If, if there's someone here in this room who has contacts for a vendor who is not part of the Korea project, please talk to them, please motivate them. We are looking for people who can help us. Um, these are the companies, uh, you probably know some of them. Um, these are the companies who are already contributing code, of course. Um, we started this project, so we have a lot of developers uh, working at the project at the moment. But it's a, it's a good thing if this 39% uh, commitment, if this gets a bit smaller for having more companies in the, um, in the diagram. These are all the companies that provided uh, input and code for Korea to support their platforms for integrating Docker with neutral networking. Because under Neutron, I, I, I think you know, under Neutron you can use vendor plugins to do the actual work. And this is, this is why, why Korea is so interesting, because people can continue using Neutron, and Korea will do the, uh, the work in the background to, uh, to connect these worlds. Do you have a question? Okay. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the reason why we think that OpenStack Neutron is a, is a, good, is a good API to, um, to, to, connect to, uh, to connect to containers is that uh, because people are used to it and um, there's, there's already a large installation base of, of, of OpenStack users and at the moment all these OpenStack uh, companies, all these companies running OpenStack in production, they're getting a lot of feedback from their developers. And normally, what the developers do is they take the OpenStack cloud and the VMs, they spawn a couple of VMs, and the first thing they install is Kubernetes. So they're basically using your infrastructure, your infrastructure as a service, they're using it to build their own networking world inside what you're providing them as, as virtual machines. Is, is that an experience you can share or is, is that something that's not happening in your, in your companies? Okay, I guess you're on. Um, so this is actually, uh, there's no laser point on this thing, right? Okay, so this is the script for Plumgrid. Is there someone from Plumgrid in here? No. So Plumgrid is a, is a networking company that provides uh, an overlay solution, a network overlay solution. And as I said, it's one of our direct competitors. So we are trying to get their customers to use our product, and they are trying to get our customers to use their product. And the Plumgrid guys have, have provided a binding script that Korea uses on the um, on the physical machine where the Docker where the Docker daemon is running uh, to connect the container uh, to uh, the, the, the virtual Ethernet port uh, of the of the container where the container is connected uh, to connect it to uh, to a neutron port. That means that when you run um, when you're using the, the network driver Korea, so you install Docker and you install Korea as a network driver for Docker, and then when you create a network in Docker and use Korea as the network driver, then Docker knows that this network exists and Korea also goes to the Neutron API and creates this. So the next time a container comes up, which is on this, uh, which is on this Docker network that was created with the Korea driver, then Korea, uh, well, exactly, it's, it's lib network from Docker, 
this script gets called as part of what Korea does to create the network connectivity for the virtual machine, uh, sorry, for the container. And we basically only need two commands, bind port and unbind port. And in the case of PlumGrid, we're using OPG bin IFC control, which is kind of like the data plane plumbing that PlumGrid uses on the Linux host. And the next thing what I show you is, oh, sorry, uh, is the Mivanet part. And it looks similar. It looks uh, surprisingly similar. We have bind port and unbind port, and also we only need we only need the port ID from Neutron, and we only need uh, the name of the virtual Ethernet uh, uh, port that's connected to container when it was created to do the uh, connection to the data path of the Mironet agent that's running on the box. Does that make sense? Okay. And if you are like, if you're coming from Contrail, or if you, if you have uh, your own networking uh, overlay software, then you can join the career project provide the script, and you're all set. There's nothing you have to do. You can even have your own networking software and your own network overlay software, the proprietary one, for example, if you want. And you can provide such a script, and we can support you. So, uh, as I said, um, uh, if, you, if you're using Korea with Docker, you get everything for free that is in Neutron today. This even goes so far that if you're using Kubernetes with Neutron, then everything you configure in Kubernetes as a service or your developers, they're building a wonderful, huge Kubernetes installation and start your open stack VMs. Tell them to stop doing that immediately they should use Korea with OpenStack and, and Docker because Korea can also run in these VMs where their Kubernetes installation is running. And the Korea agent will then translate the calls uh, from Kubernetes to set up a Kubernetes service for load balancing applications to the Neutron load balancing as a service driver. And the same ha happens with Docker Swarm. Um, we allow security groups, so in the case of Korea, uh, using security groups, not uh, port security, every, everything supported that is currently happening in Neutron is, will be automatically exposed to your Docker network. Good. Um, as I said earlier, uh, at the moment, we, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, one of the earliest one of the earliest uh, setups that we supported was Dragonflow. In fact, the Dragonflow guys uh, helped us a lot with this plugging, plugging mechanism and understanding that it's important to have uh, vendor-specific scripting. OVS supported, so if you are on standard OVS Neutron and you want to have Docker networking, install Korea. It's an open source project. It's uh, free of charge, so you don't need to pay anything. You just have to install it and run it. And then you get OVS, Neutron, and Docker networking for free. You don't have to do anything. Um, we also support Linux Bridge, and uh, this is from PlumGrid IO Wiser, and of course, Mirrorlet, our own plugin. And all, all, all that Courier is doing is, uh, Courier has a small Python daemon sitting on the hypervisor or on the Docker host. Um, or in the case of uh, if you run Kubernetes inside a VM, also there the Korea daemon is sitting. And this Korea daemon is responsible on the Docker host if you use Docker network commands to create and manage networks and to run containers. The Korea daemon will receive uh, these commands through the uh, lib network uh, Korea driver. And then Korea will talk to Keystone so using Keystone authentication, it will talk to the Neutron API. And on the other side, it's also responsible for the plumbing. So when Neutron has created the port inside the virtual topology, Neutron tells Korea, okay, this is the port that I have created inside the, the virtual network topology. 
use this UUID. Uh, this should be the uh, so when 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 the when the container comes up, there will be a, a physical tap device port associated, and then the script I have shown you uh, starts running. So it basically talks to both uh, to both APIs, and that's why its name Korea is basically takes commands or, or it takes calls from both worlds and basically only transports them to the other side. It's like a courier for your net for your network API calls. Was that a good name or <laughs> I didn't invent it, so don't blame me. <laughs> this is how it looks like. As I said, it's it's really easy. You just have to provide uh, the network driver and the IPM driver, and then from then on, it's a it's a piece of cake. And Neutron looks the same. Uh, int uh, Korea project is uh, is actively developed. So um, the current target environment we are developing is for Mitaka. Um, Mitaka should be feature complete in terms of that. Uh, at the moment, if you're using anything before Mitaka, um, you will not have the network names. When you create networks with Docker, you will not have the names of these networks in, uh, in, in the Neutron network list. The reason for this is that Docker does not give us an easy way to, uh, to find out the name when, when creating the, uh, the appropriate uh, Neutron network. So we will always have to throw <laughs> A lot of these, uh, a lot of these ugly, uh, ugly names around, but this would change in Mitaka. So in Mitaka, there will actually be, um, there will actually be a proper name associated. And this is this is from Mitaka. So this is actually the the name that was used when creating the Docker network. But when you are on Liberty right now, or or something something else, then you may m notice that uh, the Docker name does not show up. Uh, in this in this long UUID, but you can always talk to us, and we can we can find out if there's another way to help you. Yeah. It's like spawning containers. It's very revolutionary. Um, and this also works if you have if you have a lot of OpenStack networking. So you already have a running cloud. You have a lot of users on this cloud. Now they come to you and say. Um, your users are coming and say, we have a lot of networks in OpenStack and Neutron. We are very satisfied with the VMs. Everything's working great. But now our demands for Docker networks are exploding, and we have double IPAM. We have double network management. So we need to do the same thing on both sides. We're using Neutron uh, to, to configure and manage all our networks in the virtual infrastructure. And then on the other hand, we're going to Docker, to all our Docker hosts, to configure and manage all our Docker networks over there. And then you can basically create, help them and work with them to create, from now on for the future, to not create any networks inside the isolated Docker network environment anymore, but to start using career and manage everything from a single point of, of administration, which is OpenStack and Neutron. And this is how how it's working in Docker Swarm. Basically, I have the Swarm agent. People familiar to Docker Swarm will recognize this, and you have this small career service, which is, in fact, only a small Python script. So it's not enterprise software where you go for two weeks installing some JBoss container with uh, gigabytes of, of, uh, of middleware and, and Java beans. No, this is only a small Python script that that is connected to lib network and says uh, if you're using the career driver send, send, give give me a call that you just did with docker and i will make sure that they do the right calls in neutron server and so if you have time tomorrow weekend is starting it would probably take you guys two days to program your own career service and this one i mentioned in the beginning kubernetes they have their own network design we are basically using Korea uh, to also translate and transform all the all the networking concepts from uh, from Kubernetes to to make them look uh, proper in Neutron. 
is an example of the load balancer service. Um, Kubernetes has the idea of a pod, and we basically translate this to the idea how Neutron would do load balancing. And this, this works very good, so a lot of our customers like, like this idea. Because their developers come to them and say, we want to use Kubernetes, and you are responsible for running OpenStack infrastructure. And you can tell them, yeah, of course, we can do that. For us, it's Neutron load balancing. It comes out at the bottom. A complicated slide. Looks very important. Um, and this is also another reason why you should think about not using normal Docker networking anymore. So you should think about double overlay. And if you want to avoid double overlay, also Korea is the right way to go. Oh, I need an update. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm... <laughs> I wanted to install it. Uh, of course, it's not so easy. Uh, we have to do a bit of uh, bending the truth when we are in the box because we can remove the double overlay penalty for running Kubernetes in VMs, for example, but we need a so-called tagging layer to send the packets uh, from, the, uh, from the Mirrornet agent to the VM where the Docker daemon is running. So we need to have a way uh, to, uh, to take the packets there, and this is where we are using <coughs> VLANs. Um, yeah, it's basically the same slide. Uh, there's also some container bits going on. Uh, and Neutron, uh, yeah, what's also interesting in Neutron we are aiming to also look at the way Docker and, and uh, OpenStack does storage because Korea can also, at the moment Korea translates API calls between Docker and Neutron, but there's also a way that Korea can make storage work between Docker and Neutron. And please go to the launchpad, look at the Git repository and become developers for Korea because you are the community and if you help us make Korea a, a greater project, if you give us feedback, then this talk has already paid for itself. Questions? Everybody's astonished. Come on, Mark, ask about Snappy. No worries. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot.